What's going on, guys? Mary here along with Mike Mahardy, and we're going to talk to you guys about a creepy survival horror game we played on the Oculus Rift called Narcosis. It's super uncomfortable. You're underwater trying to survive, but it's not a horror in the traditional sense. There's not a lot of stuff out to kill you, per se. There's not a lot of gore. It's just unbelievably unsettling. It is claustrophobic. It is monophobic. It is hydrophobic. It is all the phobias. It's just terrifying. If you're afraid of anything that has to do with water or being inside tight space, this is going to mess with you. They've found a way to give you anxiety in most ways, all at the same time. You are in this suit, uh, which actually really helps with the way Oculus works, right? Because you're using a gamepad, which might seem a little... Um, off, right? Why am I using a gamepad to walk forward but you know, I can move my head around in this world? Well, the way Narcosis gets around that is because you're in the suit when you move your head around, you'll see the inside of your suit. You'll see the borders of your helmet. Uh, but when you're moving, you're using your thrusters of your suit to propel you forward through the water. And that kind of helps alleviate some of uh, the disparity that you feel mentally. You know, when you're trying to play a game in VR, it kind of helps convey or sell this to your brain that you're in this suit. Uh, I think they, they did that really well. Yeah, the VR really adds to the sense of space, and it also adds to the claustrophobia because a lot of the times you're in these really tight grottos and, like, you, uh, you know, moving among these rocks underwater, and uh, that's when the kind of the hallucinations come into play. The horror elements come into play when you're rounding hallways and you see something that you know shouldn't be there, but it's just odd and out of place, and then you start to question the character because many of the, much of the story is told through his monologues, so then you start saying, well, can I trust what he's saying or not? And that's where it becomes interesting as you're kind of just you know, drifting through these old abandoned corridors and whatnot. Yeah, in addition to your own real human brain questioning yourself and wondering what's going on down here and, you know, did you see something moving, you know, in the background there? The game plays tricks on you. The game makes you second-guess things that you thought you saw. Uh, the game is constantly messing with you and, uh, you know, it's a good testament to the way they, they kind of want you to be paranoid. They want you to not really know your own mental state. I think uh, Amnesia did that really well where there was a point where, um, you know, every time you got scared, your um, visuals became distorted and there was really bad audio cues and it made you feel like you were crazy and Narcosis does that in the sense where it lets you know that you're breathing heavily. It tells you that your oxygen level intake is uh, high. And you actually told me, you scuba dive, uh, that that's real, that it happens. Yeah, narcosis essentially when you're just coming up too fast and you don't really know what you're doing, you can just deprive your brain of oxygen and it leads to this really weird sickness where you, your mind can play tricks on you and that's why the horror elements in this are, like we said, they're not traditional and it kind of comes into, you know, it removes you even further from the character because you're inhabiting his body but you don't feel safe at any point in time because you know he might not be in his right mind and you're at the same time, you're dealing with these survival elements, you know, you're running out of oxygen because your reserves are depleted and now so you're going through these corridors, uh, sometimes running into these weird underwater monsters which can scare the hell out of you. Underwater spiders, they're the worst. They look like the thing, which, like John Carpenter's monster and it scared the hell out of me the first time because I was just I was dealing with these hallucinations and I was dealing with kind of always constantly worrying about my oxygen and they, it does a good job from what we've played of encouraging you to explore these really creepy abandoned decrepit corridors but also making you focus really hard on you know your, your vital signs your oxygen uh, and it just all these things really coalesce to create this odd uh, you know like disturbing experience and you can't really put your finger on it for most of the time this game gets quite surreal and without giving away too much you will find things that do not belong down there and it will make you question your own sanity is it down there and it's just like a weird you know circumstance that this would even get down here or am i losing it am i losing my mind down here and you know that's something that uh, even soma made me do sometimes when i would wonder like is this all real I just kind of just going nuts. Maybe this is what happens when you have narcosis and you start losing oxygen in your brain that you start dreaming and eventually, you know, maybe you're dying. You know, these are like really creepy things that happen over time. This game brings out the worst fear in in your own psyche. 
so I thought it did a really great job of that. Yeah, I really like how it plays with my sense of space because a lot of the hallucinations taking place kind of, they almost become puzzle elements, right? When you're moving through these environments and you're saying, oh, I should go this way and I'll end up in another place. But clearly the character's mind isn't working like that. And, you know, you start to question whether it's the place you're in or him. And it also gives you this kind of paranoia that like just seeps under the surface this whole time. And I'm really looking forward to seeing whether that can be carried through the entire experience because we only played, I think, half an hour apiece tops. Yeah. And I really want to see how they kind of use the character's own, like, disturbed mentality to kind of lend itself to the narrative because that's the appealing thing for me. Uh, and the more I play it, the more I, I want to see where it's going and where this character is taking us, whether he needs to or not. And whether I can trust him because right now I don't feel like I can. I don't trust anyone down there. I don't trust the spiders. I don't trust that dude. I don't trust myself. I mean, that's really what it's all down to. <laughs> it's like you're on your own down there. And, uh, you know, it's it's going to be really interesting to see what they do with it, not just for the Oculus. And if you guys are interested in Oculus, uh, this game will be coming out on PC and Mac as well. So it's not just a VR experience. It's also, um, you know, just for, for us regular PC Mac users. So there's a, a lot to delve into in this story, and we will have to see uh, more when it comes out, which uh, supposedly is in late spring 2016, which is... Uh, that's not <laughs> fear. That's not right. I'm looking forward to playing it. Thanks for watching, it's not guys. fear when the only options go.